Dante's Boxing Nation, Dante's Cooking Nation. We are out here. Where are we at? We are out here in Bangkok. There you go. She's from Ireland. Matter of fact, introduce yourself to the world. My name is Hannah, and I'm from Ireland, and I'm the biggest fan of You hear that? Yeah. yeah. Biggest fan? And I'm what? from Ireland. Sorry. All the way in Bangkok, in Bangkok, Thailand, y'all. No, I'm getting in right. Ireland as well. In Ireland. You hear that? <laughs> DBN is my, international, my, guys. My <laughs> Earl Smith right now is the most dominant 147 pound that they got. He done beat everybody in the division that he can. He just steady stepping on top of everything that he could throughout injuries, throughout tragic situations. Look at Earl Smith Jr. Oh, 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 oh. Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on, guys? I'm going to tell you right now. The more time goes by, the more we are learning. It doesn't matter what weight class the fighter is in. No one is in a hurry to fight against, pound for pound, the best fighter in the world, Terrence Crawford. You know, guys, usually it's the other way around, where there's some guy at a much higher weight class that is calling out someone much smaller because that guy is considered either pound for pound, the best fighter in the world, or he's the biggest name in the sport. Like when Gennady Golovkin was always calling out a Floyd Mayweather. Or even a better example, like when the much bigger Canelo Alvarez was always calling out the much smaller, older Floyd Mayweather. Don't get me wrong. We've seen much smaller fighters call out bigger fighters, but we haven't really seen big fighters react the way fighters are reacting to Terrence Crawford calling them out today. We've already heard what Canelo Alvarez has said recently. Terrence Crawford, you know, when he said that he would move up to 160 to fight Canelo, Canelo said, you would have to come all the way up to 168 if you want to fight me. So Terrence Crawford said, okay, well, let's go ahead and make the fight at 168. I'll come to 168. Now Canelo Alvarez is saying, oh, well, you know, if I fight that guy, I won't get any credit, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. He's still not interested in taking the fight. Now, ever since Terrence Crawford beat Errol Spence, Jamel Charlo, he's been talking as if he's very interested in fighting against Terrence Crawford after the Canelo Alvarez fight. But in a recent interview, he actually said something that made it sound like maybe he's not that interested. I'm, I'm putting boots in there with, with Terrence Crawford. I, yeah, I want to see that. I see boots of Terrence Crawford go at it. That'd be nice. Leave us alone. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see Terrence Crawford fight Jerron Ennis and leave us alone. This is what Jamel Charlo just said. Now, remember, guys, Terrence Crawford has been calling out Jamel Charlo for quite some time. He has always said way before the uh, Spence versus Crawford fight was even official. Crawford had already revealed what his plans were, which is to beat Errol Spence and then move up to 154 and then beat Jamel Charlo. And if you guys recall, Jamel Charlo's reaction to Crawford calling him out was he needs to fight Errol Spence. Terrence Crawford, he needs to fight Errol Spence. So Terrence Crawford, he obliges Jamel Charlo. And now Jamel is saying he needs to fight Jerron Ennis. But the problem with Jamel saying that is if Jamel were to beat Canelo Alvarez, everyone is going to be clamoring for Crawford versus Jamel Charlo. Now, Crawford versus Jerron Ennis would be a great fight. But the truth is, no one wants to see that fight over Crawford versus the winner of Canelo and Charlo. And Jamel Charlo, he knows this. You know, the whole situation is so ironic. Because just like Jamel Charlo believes Canelo is an easier fight than a Terrence Crawford fight, Canelo, he believes the same thing. He believes that the Charlo fight would be an easier fight than the Terrence Crawford, despite the fact that Terrence Crawford is smaller. In the situation, skill definitely recognizes skill. Now, this doesn't mean there's no chance of Charlo or Canelo fighting against Terrence Crawford. It just means they understand how difficult of a challenge it would be to fight Terrence Crawford, or maybe I should say to beat him. At the end of the day, it's gonna be up to Jamel Charlo or Canelo Alvarez if they decide to, of course, fight the undisputed welterweight champion, Terrence Crawford. But the winner of this fight will most likely end up having the same options, 
which is either the winner of Benavidez versus Andrade, Terrence Crawford, or if Canelo Alvarez wins the fight, Jamal Charlo. But with everything that's going on in Jamal Charlo's life right now, he might not be mentally prepared to fight at all after this fight this month with Charlo and Canelo. Remember, Jamal, he's been announcing his return for quite some time and it keeps getting pushed back because of everything going on in his personal life, despite the fact that he is training right now. But training or no training, you guys have to remember, the sport of boxing is at least 80 to 90% mental. So no matter how hard you train, you have to be mentally ready. Now, as much as boxing fans would love to see Terrence Crawford versus Jamal Charlo, or Jamel Charlo, I should say, the truth is, Jamel, he really doesn't have to fight Crawford if he's going to fight against the winner of Andre and Benavidez next. Because Jamel Charlo actually said that he wants the David Benavidez fight after Canelo. And we know when Jamel Charlo says he wants a fight, he really means it. Just like when Terrence Crawford says it. Canelo Alvarez's situation is different because like I told you guys, if Jamal Charlo is unavailable, what other options is Canelo going to have? His options will most likely be David Benavidez, David Morrell, or Terrence Crawford. But actually, now that we're talking about Canelo Alvarez, I'm forgetting there is one more option for Canelo, and that would be Errol Spence. Because I know Canelo Alvarez, he would have no problem fighting Errol Spence coming off of a knockout loss at 168. Hell, for an Errol Spence fight, Canelo Alvarez might even go back on his word, and he may actually come down and wait and meet Errol Spence somewhere at a catch weight. We'll see how it plays out. With that being said, I'm gonna wrap this video up. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one. All right, now check this out, guys. If you're looking to repair eczema scars, burns and bruises, dark spots and blemishes, the fever blisters, diabetic ulcers, this right here is the perfect product for you guys. It's called L.O. Dekey Face and Body Oil. Athletes and top-ranking boxers, they're also using it after training to reduce swelling and inflammation and to ease the pain. So get yours today. Go to LODekey.com. Like them on Facebook and follow them on Instagram. Let me tell you guys about Issa Israel Law Firm. It is a full-service legal practice based in Denver, Colorado, an emerging hub for combat sports and high-altitude training. If you're a fighter inside or outside of the ring and you need a law firm you can trust to fight for you, visit thefighterfirm.com or email help at iilawfirm.com. Legal representation is usually limited to plaintiffs or defendants in Colorado, but iFirm can help anyone in the world with trademarking their business name, logos, and U.S. immigration issues. This brother has been my attorney for a while and helped guide me through all kinds of business and civil issues, so make sure you guys go to thefighterfirm.com. Fellas, I've got some great news for you. If you've lost your hair or have a receding hairline, the time has come when you can finally get your hairline back through a process called scalp micropigmentation. So here's how it works. It's a hair tattoo that replicates the look of your hair follicles when you have fully shaved it down. So to get this hookup, make sure you follow and contact my man Scalp Carolinas on Instagram.